a very important question people have to ask themselves is how do the disposable needles, the newcomers on the block, compare to the reusable ones that were the initial designs by Eric Stahlberg and Co. Fortunately, we actually have a paper that looked at this in detail. And before you look at it, and it's over here, I'd like to run through a couple of really important points before you make your own determination about some of the uh, statements therein. So let's first of all compare a couple of disposable single fiber EMG electrodes. This is actually the brand used in the study itself. It's from a company called uh, SCI EMG from Italy or SCI EMG, I'm not sure how that's uh, pronounced. And with their uh, disposable single fiber EMG needle, um, it actually took a fair bit of finding this. It has a stated internal core of 0.00125 millimeter squared. And if you do the maths, then it actually translates to having a diameter of just shy of 40 micrometers. So um, that's the diameter of their core within the disposable single fiber EMG needle. If we have a look at the Spes Medica one, um, similarly, uh, it's got a recording area of 0.0011 millimeters squared. Um, and in fact, if you then work out the diameter of that, that's uh, 37 and a half micrometers um, in terms of its diameter. So it's a little bit narrower than uh, the one from Psi. EMG. But basically we're talking about roughly an order of magnitude about 38 and a half uh, micrometers. Let's compare that with a couple of reusable EMG needles. So we have here um, from Dantec, uh, they've got their autoclavable single fiber EMG uh, needle electrode of 25 micrometer diameter. Um, and that's exactly the same as what's published in the Stahlberg books. And also Technomed similarly also do a, a, a reusable one here, which has a diameter of also 25 uh, micrometers in terms of its inner core. Um, of course, the inner core is very different to the outer sheath of the needle. And I'll just draw your attention to that very important point. So if we then work out the area of what a 25 micrometer diameter core will generate, so this is in millimeters squared and in uh, micrometers squared, that's 490 micrometers. And um, if we then step up to the disposable ones, and I've just called it here 38 and a half micrometers diameter, the area increases to uh, 1,164 micrometer squared. So for a diameter change of about one and a half times, the circle area, the recording surface actually increases by 2.4 times. And this isn't really a surprise when you consider a pi r squared, uh, there are significant increases to the area when you make even small increases to the diameter. And here we go with our dear old Ambu facial EMG needle. And just to give you some idea of that, its recording area state is 0.02 two millimeters squared, and if you do the maths on that, um, its actual um, diameter uh, in terms of the uh, recording uh, surface, the inner, inner part is 0.16, and uh, therefore its total area is uh, 20,000 uh, micrometers squared, so that's a 41 times increase uh, compared to the true single fiber EMG. So um, that's really interesting when you think about just how significantly different the recording surfaces involved between the reusable true single fiber EMG needle, the disposable true single fiber EMG needle, and the disposable facial um, concentric needle electrodes. Really quite marked differences in diameters and subsequent recording uh, zones. So let's just come back now to this comparison uh, paper between the disposable and reusable single fiber EMG electrodes. So the first of their highlight findings was that normative values for disposable and reusable single fiber EMG needles are not different. Well, that's not a surprise 
we know from multi-center studies that if you take the facial concentric needle electrodes, their normative data is the same as the true single fiber, reusable um, single fiber electrodes. And so therefore this uh, slightly larger um, disposable single fiber EMG electrode is, is, which falls well within that range, um, is certainly going to have the same normative value. So th there's no real surprise in that at all. The next point uh, that they found was the use of disposable single fiber EMG needles allows a sampling of more potentials per stimulation uh, session. These are a stimulator technique for this. And again, that's no surprise. I mean, here's um, a representative trace which they've published uh, from their paper. The one on the left is from the disposable one. You can see multiple um, potentials over there uh, compared to just a couple of larger ones over here on the right hand side from the reusable traditional ones. Um, and we now know quite clearly that the recording surface of the disposable single fiber EMG needles is larger. So that's no surprise that it's sucking in more potentials than the reusable uh, standard uh, single fiber EMG needles. The real surprise of the paper, which the authors um, acknowledge, was the size of the potentials, particularly for the reusable ones. I mean, you can see here, this is very, very small um, for something which I would have expected to be in the order of magnitude of several millivolts. Here it's really a, a fr fractions of millivolts. And even from the disposable set over here, again, it's much smaller than I would have hoped for, given what we now know, if you look at the previous um, videos that I've made, what the true single fibre EMG needles are capable of providing. So that was quite a surprise. They've come up with a number of theories. Um, I'll let you make your own determination um, when you read through the paper about that. But uh, what I would suspect is the case is that they may have been distant from the source generating uh, potentials here. Um, and we know quite clearly that if one is distant from them, the effects are actually quite significant with the true single fiber EMG needles. One does get a marked drop down of amplitude um, as that happens. And I suspect that that might be to do with the fact that the reusable ones were not sharpened uh, at their tips and that might have led to um, the needles not being quite close enough to the um, sources from the muscle fibers generating uh, these signals. But that's just my suspicion, I don't know. Um, but they have their own theories as to that and I'll let you um, have a look at that yourself. Um, the last point that they made, and uh, this is really sort of comes back to my first impression of the cost of using single fiber EMG needles was, um, and, and here we go, that basically the reusable ones uh, ended up being 18 euros per patient. Um, whereas the disposable ones were 82 euros each at the time. Now, ob obviously things have changed and as they very correctly predicted, um, the cost of making and purchasing the disposable true single fiber EMG needles has considerably um, come down um, in price. So if you're interested in finding out more about the price of the needles, well, you've got a couple of different places where you can now have a look for them. Uh, Craig from Unimed um, is a, a very good source uh, and give a very competitive rate, but equally speaking, you know, go and uh, make your own determinations and uh, your own research. We've got the company from Italy, um, Sci EMG, also a similar provider, and um, I think that um, it's far cheaper than was the case all those years ago. So I'm not going to provide the price um, for them here and now. Prices fluctuate all the time and I think you need to be contacting a supplier to actually get a price but it's much cheaper than that um, and it's actually quite doable really. It just really depends on what you think the benefit to your practice is and what it provides to you in terms of the quality and patient acceptability of having a larger needle um, in flip side being of course that one would hopefully get a better uh, quality and therefore significance from those uh, studies than perhaps with the uh, facial concentric ones but make your own determination and uh, your own investigations in all of this i hope you found this one interesting uh, there are some more 
um, videos to come on this subject still, and uh, have a great day.